Can we stand one more time, just real quick, please, if you can? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful that I go to a church that's led by the Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit, we're here right now. And what Dad just prophesied, Lord, I get in agreement with that fully 150% if possible. Lord, I pray that everyone in here is in agreement as well, Lord God. Amen. And so, Father, we lift our hands right now before You, Lord, and we thank You yes. that we need the Word and the Spirit. Yes. I'm blowing a wind. I'm blowing a wind from heaven, says the Spirit of the Lord. I'm blowing it from the east to the west, to the north to the south. I'm blowing my breath of life. I'm blowing my breath to restore liberty in this nation. And not a liberty of man, but a liberty of my plan, says the Spirit of God. I'm blowing the breath of life. And there will be many people that will spring up and spring out and go and do what I've called them to do without a doubt. They'll be the man. They'll be the woman. They'll be the boy. They'll be the girl that I've called them to be. They'll flourish in a day of famine, you see, because it's my breath that I breathe with full liberty upon them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Wow. Wow. See that. See it. Look in your spirit and see the breath of God. It's blowing in here right now. Just receive it. Ha! Whoa. Glory. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, man. Lord, let it burn on the inside. Let it revive. Be revived! Be revived! Be revived! By the glory of the living God! Jesus' name! Whoa! Thank you, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Respond to the glory right now. Respond to it. Respond to it. Receive it. Yes, we receive it. Receive it. Yes, we receive it. Receive the word of the Lord. God can do more for you in one second than you can in five years yourself. That's right. Let it burn
demonstrate, demonstrate, Father, in their bodies. And now, Jesus the healer, Jesus the provider, Jesus the deliverer, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, new organs, be and bodies, miracles, the fire of God, let it burn. Let's just burn it in me right now. Let him sense the tangible fire from heaven. Take it. Thank you, Lord. Take it. Take it. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. not of man but of God it's not of man but of God we receive from heaven our faith is in heaven our faith is in Jesus the son of the living God God, I love you. Thank you. God, we love you. Yeah. Jesus, we love you. Yeah. We love you. You're the miracle worker, the miracle maker. Angels of fire, ministers of fire in this place. Yes. Addictions leave. In Jesus' name. If you'll receive today, you'll have. I'll explain in a minute what's going on right now, but receive it now. Thank you. Receive it. Thank you, Father. Receive healing now. Have it. It's yours. It's free. It's here. The fire of the living God is in this place. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Who fills the fire of the Lord right now? Just lift your hand in this place. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Just receive the fire of the living, the living God. Thank you, Lord. Fire comes to purge and to cleanse. Purge and cleanse. Purge and cleanse every disease out of us. Purge and cleanse. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord. Earlier I saw this, and I don't see demons. I've seen one. Over all the years I've been doing ministry, I've seen one. As I was praying for somebody. Earlier during praise and worship, I saw this big old fat, black. I don't even know how to describe it. It was just this big, fat, black uh, demon. And it had spikes and bumps all over it. And it had eyes. And it had a mouth. And I saw it trying to hover over this place and over some of, these, some of you. And his mom was praying for a chance earlier. I'm not saying it was him, I'm just saying this is what, what I just said, I, that's what I saw, is what I just said. Yeah. And when she was praying for him, I saw that thing explode. Yes, yeah. glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. It 
explode. Like you'd see someone take a hammer to a watermelon, but a hundred times worse. I saw it explode. Thank you, Lord. And the liquid that you, came out of that thing dried up instantly. Amen. In the power of God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know exactly what that is, but I'm glad it's gone. Yes. And if God wants to give me more on that, He'll tell me I'm open to that. If He wants to give you something on it, great. But all I know is I don't know what that was. Yeah. I don't know, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. New organs. Yeah. Sit down if you haven't sat down yet. Fine, sit down. But just listen to me right now. The Bible says that there's a two-edged sword in our mouth. That when we speak and we line up with what the Holy Spirit is saying, and as we use our mouth to speak and declare the things of God, or what God tells us to declare or to decree, when we do that, that two-edged sword, one of that edge is God's Word, and the other edge is your tongue lining up with God's Word. Now, I came in here this morning with no clue, like usual, of what the Lord wants to do. Brother Ron came up to me and he asked me, he said, uh, can I have a title for today's message so I can put it on the internet? And I said, Brother Rob, I have no idea what I'm even going to say. So if you want, if you want to put Mike Purcell's weird or something like that, that might attract you know, a bunch of people or something. But I, I have no idea. And I had no idea when I got up here that I was going to prophesy and declare that. Some folks will call it fanaticism. Some folks will call it emotionalism. Some folks will call it putting on. Some folks will call it excitement. Some folks will call it, it's just, you know, well, it's just whatever is trying to pump us up or whatever. That has nothing to do with it. I got up here and I did exactly what God told me to do. Yeah. And if he told me to sit down right now, I would sit down. I wouldn't say another word. I'm not into fluffy people. I'm not into trying to make people stay. I'm not into to, uh, trying to be a soothsayer and say whatever I feel like preaching or saying or whatever people I think people want to hear or whatever. I'm up here just to declare and decree the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And He'll have us at times. He'll have me at times. And it's pretty rare to be honest with you. What I did right now and that yelling and all that stuff, that wasn't me. I didn't plan on yelling. I don't like to yell really. I try to live as peaceful as I can. Try not to get word of that. But as I yelled, there was a decree from heaven. I don't know if you felt it, but I felt the power of God necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Not because it was just on me. It's in here for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That will step in. And when I heard new organs today, whoever is in here that needs new organs, if you'll just receive them and say, thank you, Lord, I have them. They're mine. They're working in me. You'll have them. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what he wanted to do. That's what he did today. That's what he's doing. What else do we have to believe? Who else can we trust? Nobody. We're Christians, right? Amen. We live by this. Every word that proceeded from the mouth of God is yours. You can have everything this book says. 
if you will submit to the workmanship of God and to the voice of God, you can have it. Some of you are probably thinking, why are my eyes closed? Thank you. Excuse me. It's okay to think that way. I think it's weird too if I'm sitting out there. Because <laughs> I don't want to look at people right now. I'm trying to just hear what the Holy Spirit wants me to do. And say. Not weird. I just want to hear God. I want to be led by God. My job, what God has called me to do is to raise up warriors in the kingdom of God. Amen. My job, God has chose me to be on the front lines. Amen. To my natural mind, it doesn't sound fun at all. But on the inside, it's the will of God for my life, and I want it. This ministry that God has put me and placed me in, that mom and dad planted in 1983 here, God has planted me here to raise up warriors. Amen. And we are going to take over Madeira. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on. Glory, come on. Amen. Glory to you, Lord. Amen. Yeah, come on. Oh. Started yesterday. Soul winners. Yes. Hallelujah. Soul winners. Amen. Soul winners. Amen. Hallelujah. Soul winners. Amen. Devil cast outers. Amen. Amen. That's right. Fire of God burning on you and being released to others. Well, things have changed in America. Has it ever changed in here? No. No. Nope. It hasn't. What they did, you can do. What Jesus did, you can do. What Jesus had and has, you can have. What does Jesus always say? If you will believe. believe. <laughs> and when you believe, you make a decision that you're going to serve Him with all your heart, spirit, soul, and body. Not wavering in anything. If you came here today to church on a Sunday morning, to make God happy, it doesn't work. Because He's already happy with the love you. So that's the religious mindset that the Western church has. I'm going to go to church so God will be happy for me. No. You are the church! Right. Every day. Every second. You're the body of Christ. He's happy with you. He loves you. He protects you. He keeps you. He guides you. He directs you. We get into problems when we say no and live in pride. <clears throat> all of us have been there, all of us. I've lived in pride and been in problems all kinds of times. But His grace and His mercy is sufficient. There's nothing like His love. There's nothing like the kiss of God. <sighs> the local church is important. Very important for you, for me. I need a pastor. I need leaders. Yes. I need brothers and sisters. Yes. Let's, let's talk about that for a second. Acts chapter, turn over to Acts. Okay, so let me say this because I don't know, man. I mean, I'm, I, I don't know. Some of you are used to me. Some of you are not used to me. And some of you might be really afraid right now. Or I don't know, but I'm just a loving guy and I love Jesus. And Amen. He healed me of cancer in 2008. Yeah. Changed my life forever. Been a believer all my life. Been born again since I was a young, young child. Didn't always serve God. <clears throat> Came to a point in my life where <clears throat> I, knew, I, I knew I better serve Him. Or I was going to leave early. And um, um, uh, 
You just got to make decisions, man. Some of you in here got to make some decisions on what you're going to do. Jesus, Jesus is not a person that binds people. Jesus is a person that looses people. Religion binds you. Religion holds you in custody. You're in prison if you're, if you're religious. <coughs> Works has nothing to do with following Jesus. How good you've been, how bad you've been, how goofy you've been, has nothing to do with your relationship with Jesus Christ. You... Have asked Him to be your Savior. He's forgiven you. You're cleansed from all unrighteousness. Your flesh. You make mistakes. You blow it. You err. You judge things wrong sometimes. We do it all. All of us do it. We all do it at times. But that has nothing to do with the blood of Jesus Christ and what He's already done for your life. The devil will twist and turn those things into condemnation and say you're this, you're that because of your dad, because of your mom, because of your grandparents, because of your school teacher, or whatever. He twists and he plots and he tries to deceive you into thinking that your past is, is going to stay in your present. And the devil's a liar. Yeah. That's right. right. Your past has nothing to do with who you are now. That's right. <coughs> What? I've blown it so many times. I've been born again for years and I've blown it so many times. Join the club. I probably even have the t-shirt. But that has nothing to do with my relationship today with my father. You decide every day that you're going to love God. And you're going to give him your life. And you're going to be that clean slate. That clean, that clean board. And you're going to be open to the Holy Ghost on a daily basis. And you're going to be led by the Spirit of God. You think about the disciples for just a second. You think about Peter and Paul and John and those guys. You think about those guys for a second. They got up and just were open to the Holy Spirit on a daily basis and did what God told them to do. That's how they lived their life. They didn't try to reach for the American dream. They didn't try to, obviously they weren't in America, but I'm using today's society. They didn't, oh, I gotta have this and I gotta have that. No, all you gotta have is God. Right. And then when you have all of Him and you're doing everything He wants you to do, don't worry. You'll have gas in your car, you'll have bread in your pantry, you'll have water to drink. He'll yes, bless you. Come on. He'll take care of you. He'll open doors. If 99 out of 100 people said that won't happen for you, he'll be the one that says it's going to happen for you. Because he has favor on you. Amen. That's how God is. You can be doing one thing for a season, and all of a sudden that thing shuts off, and he opens up another valve for you to flow in. That's where we're at. God does not change, but seasons change. Seasons change. What season are you in? Where are you right now with the living God? Where are you? What season? What does He want you to do? What has He been talking to you about? What has He been giving you dreams about? What has He been using people to speak over you about? What is it? And if you know what it is, do it. Do it. I found out the best way for you to live a, a godly lifestyle and to live in the, in the season and live in the plan and purpose and will of God for your life is to just do it. 
Do it. We're in a season of harvest. Mm -hmm. We're in a season of the harvest of God. Amen. Not only souls, but harvest in your personal life, your life, your family. Yes. Right. Yes. Listen and go the direction that He's telling you to go. Do what He's telling you to do. Look, this is a place here. This ministry is a place of healing. It's a place of miracles. It's a place of harvest. It's a place of the Holy Spirit. It's a place of wild people that love God. <laughs> Amen. And that don't care what people think about that. Right. Not a shame. Not a shame. And I really believe in my heart. Are you one of those wild guys? Sometimes you just, I gotta, I can't, there's just sometimes I can't say certain things. I like, guess God just shuts me up. <laughs> but we're in a new season. <laughs> You're right. You, you, you don't want to say what. He tells you not to say that. We're in a season of change. Yes. We're in a season of change. Even faces. We're going to see new people come. And you people that are here, that are locked in here, and this is your local church, and this is where you've planted yourself, and you're doing fully what you feel like you need to do in this ministry, you need to stay awake Amen. to the new people that are going to start coming in. Because guess what? I ain't going to be able to deal with everybody. And neither is dad or mom. But we as a body are going to be able to help you. And we need to continue to pray that hearts will be open and soften and they'll come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. We've got a big part to play in this community. We're already playing it. Yeah. Our street evangelism is kicking off. Actually, we had to change the date on that. It's going to be the 21st. Not, not this coming Saturday, but the 21st. We had, to, we had to move it up just a week. But that's getting ready to kick off. And that isn't just, oh, this is a great idea. This is a God-ordained thing yeah. that God wants to do. And I know it because He spoke to me very clearly on it. Yeah. And when we go out, there's going to be a lot of fish. Yes. They're going to be caught. Amen. Don't compare people to fish. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I think you all know what I mean. Yes. We're going to have healings, miracles. It's going to bring the glory of God into this city. People are going to be resurrected from the dead. Thank you, yes, come on. Yes. Spiritually dead. People that are dying <coughs> are going to be broken yeah. by the love of God. Yeah. And we all get to be a part of that if we want to. Yeah. Glory. So praying for that. Yeah. It starts on the 21st. 10 o'clock here at the church. If you want to go, you're welcome to come. Now look at Acts chapter 13. Actually, Acts 12, I meant is what I mean. 12. The importance of the local church is huge. I'll just share one example. And I can stand up here and talk about many over the years of what the local church has not only done for me personally, but for my family. And even some of you in here that have watched, God, a lot of people in here actually have watched the local church be a blessing to you. But in 2008, when I was going through leukemia, I needed my local church. Yeah. I needed prayer. Yes. I needed people to stand with me. Yes. Yes. Even though I was, it was between me and the Lord, and I was coming before the Lord, but I still needed people praying yes. and speaking life. 
yes. and speaking what God uh, sp spoke to them to come share or speak to me. Amen. I needed that. Yeah. Yes. Without the local church, it would have been really hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It didn't mean it would take my faith away and the Word of God and what God has said about healing and about me and, and the trueness of all that. But you need the body. Amen. We yes. need each other. Yes. I think Jesus was very serious. Or uh, not Jesus, but but uh, uh, who uh, the gathering together. We need to gather together as the time draws near. Amen. We need to gather. Yes. yes. And we need to do the word. Amen. 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 So look. Acts 12, this was uh, when uh, King Herod, how many know that guy was full of devils? Yeah. Look like King Herod was being violent to the church. Well, let's just start here at verse 1. It says, Now about that time Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread, so when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Verse 5. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but, everybody say but. But. Constant prayer was offered to yeah. God for him by the church. Yeah. By the church. Some folks say, well, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I can pray for this guy over here, but I don't think it's really going to do that much. That's a lie from the devil. That's right. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of times... Now, I'm going to hit the mark right here with some of you. Some of you needed this. You've been thinking about this. This is the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of times where I don't even know how to pray for a person's situation. That's right. That's true. Right. Yeah. Someone will bring a situation to me. I need you to pray for so-and-so. They're sick or whatever. There's times where I don't even know what to say about them or say towards that situation. And I have to stop for a second and I have to look on the inside. And most of the time I'll just start to pray in the Holy Ghost over it. Yeah. And then God will usually just give me a word or give me something just to say over them. Lord, I just speak the life, your life into them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And even if you do that once, do you understand how powerful that is yes. for that person's situation? Yes. Mm -hmm. Your mouth matters. Yes. That's right. Your tongue matters. That's right. What God says to you and you say, it matters. Yes. And there's yes. power behind it. Yes. That's right. Yes, yes. Well, I, I've prayed for this person and I've spoken this over that person and they still pass away or, or they're still not serving God or they're still this or they're still that. Don't worry about that. Do what God tells you to do and do it. Yes. God has to work with people. Does, did he ever, does he ever have to work with you? Well, all the time. Right? right? So we can't take what we've seen or what has happened in the past and make that some kind of doctrine. Well, I did that once. I guess it doesn't work, so I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> no. You say what the Lord says to say. Right. You do what the Lord says to do about it. Thank you, Lord. There's so many things that I don't understand. But if I keep focused on what I don't understand, I'll never learn what I need to learn. That's right. That's right. Right? That's right. So, I believe that a lot of us, including myself, there's things we just don't know. But God knows what's going on and why and how and when. It's our job just to align our hearts with Him, follow Him on a daily basis, do what He tells us to do on a daily basis, say what we need to say, and it's just really one day at a time. Just, just follow Him. I never saw Jesus tell Peter or tell John or tell, 
look, three months from now, you need to be this, and I, you're going to do this. No, he just said, get your stuff, and let's go. Follow me. We left it all. And what did he tell Peter? I'll make you a fisher of men. Okay, Jesus, let's go. He said he's going to make me a fisher of men. I believe it. Whatever. You know what he said to me? He said, I'm going to use you to bring the glory into Madeira. Yeah. yeah. Come on. And I'm going to put people around you that are going to hook up to that, and they're going to get a hold of that, and they're going to be just vessels of glory. Amen. Come on. And they're going to change a region, and they're going to change an area for the glory and the love of the living God. Yeah. yeah. Well, America's far too off. There's no way that anything like the Welsh revival can happen again. Bigger. <laughs> Sorry, God. I didn't, I didn't ask you. No! God is God. And when God says something, and I guarantee you He has said things to you personally in this place yes. that you can stand up and testify about what He said about your life and what He wants to use you to do. He's even shown you things to come. Yes. Exciting. And if you'll stand on that and don't let it go to waste, stand on it, believe it, keep going until the manifestation happens. Yeah. Yeah. Run your race. Amen. Do your part. Yes. <laughs> Discern what the body and the blood of the Lord is in your life. Amen. <laughs> what part do you play in the body and the blood of Jesus? Yes. Thank you, Lord. What part? <laughs> <laughs> I'm having some doors in my life open up right now that I never thought would. It, it's, it's, it's been uh, unexpected. And some, all of a sudden, there's some opportunities. Yes. Come on. And I'm weighing them. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to do this? Yes. Sometimes people will ask you to do things and it isn't of God. Sometimes people will ask you to do things and it yeah. is of God. You just don't know it yet. Okay. That's where I'm at right now, if that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you, Seasons. Things are happening. Yes. Things are changing. Amen. <laughs> Where I thought I was uninvolved and out of what I did about 20 years ago, all of a sudden there's an opportunity for me to get back into doing some of this stuff. Yes. And I'm going, I thought this was gone a long time ago. Yeah. See, God is serious about you yes, infiltrating darkness. That's right. right. Yes. Amen. Don't be afraid to step out when God says to step out. He knows what He's doing. He wants to plant you that's full of light and the love of God. He wants to plant you somewhere where there's people dying in darkness. And you know what? He wants you to be like Peter and walk along and release the anointing of God that's in you. See, a lot of us don't even know that we release it and we don't even know it. There's tons of times it's probably happened to me. I've released anointing in a certain place or on a certain person, and I had no idea I was doing it. I was just had the heart of God. I wanted Him to be blessed. Amen. Amen. I'll share a little story. And this will bless some of you because, listen, some of you have been hungering for God to use you in the marketplace. That's right. If Peter's shadow, which was the anointing, it wasn't his literal shadow from the sun touching somebody. It was represented, that this resembles the anointing, that shadow's on him. There's a covering, the anointing that's on him. As he walked by people, people got healed. Yeah, but that's Peter. Saint Peter. <laughs> 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 I'm having fun, but did he did God ever put your name in the Bible and call your name out and say, that was Peter, but Barnard, you can't do that. No. Mike, you can't do that. Never read that scripture? No. Yeah, but these are people in the Bible. 
look at these people's lives. <coughs> yeah, amen. Yeah. They were human as you're human. King David, now I don't say this, I'm not condoning what King David did with Bathsheba. Don't go out and do that, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> but he blew it. That's crushing, like for me that's crushing. I, I, could, I can't see myself doing that to my wife. That's me. Okay, I know people have made mistakes and we've had problems and things happen. I understand that. But he blew it. He didn't only committed adultery. He had a man killed. The husband. The husband. What was his name again? Uriah. 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 Plot and plan. I've got her pregnant, so now i got to send him out there to get him killed so he doesn't find out she's pregnant. And they'll think that she got pregnant by him before he left for war. And what happened? Here comes the prophet. Hey, David. Guess what? This is what you did. done. This is what you did. This is what you did. That's the worst. It's good, but it's not fun. Because like me, when the prophet would come to church, I would try to hide. Especially when I was an idiot. Man, Alba Husky's wife, oh my gosh, Sister Lorraine, she pulled me into the garage one time when I was in ninth grade, and she just let me have it. <laughs> she grabbed me by the shirt, pulled me up to her face, this is what you're doing, this is how you're doing it, this is where you're doing it. Oh, that's <laughs> I thought she was going to kill me. <laughs> Looking around, where's my mom and dad? <laughs> They're probably watching, going. <laughs> <laughs> but boy. So yeah, I repented for a few days and then I went back to being an idiot again. You know what I mean? Yeah. But David, he heard. And you know what separates him from a lot of people? He repented and fell on his face before the yes. Lord and said, Lord, if there's anything on my heart, anything in me, rip it out. Yes. I blew it. Yeah. But he went back to God. Yes. He went back to Him. And even when he did all that, and God healed him, restored him, blessed him, forgave him, all that, I guarantee you David still blew it in areas. He was human. But the key is you continue to stay before the Lord. And a lot of that stuff that you're dealing with will be flushed out. Yep. Amen. John 15 says so. Yep. It'll be flushed out. It'll be cut off. Amen. You'll grow. You'll stretch. You'll be reborn. You'll be rebirthed. Newness will come. come on. Growth. Growth. So it says here, Peter, verse 5, was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Verse 6. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping bound with two chains between two soldiers. And the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. Yes. Now let me ask you a question here. Why did this happen to Peter? The church was praying. Yes. Yes. That's it. Praying. The church was praying. Amen. Yes. Amen. You belong. To God, of course. But let me tell you something. There's also another place that you as an individual belong in the body of Christ. And I've watched people, and I'm going to harp on this for a second, because this is, this is true. And this is where the rubber meets the road for a lot of folks. I've been in church all my life, 
And I've watched people come and go and pick and choose where they want to go, who they want to be, where they want to move, what they want to do, what church they want to go to. And when you see people do that, a lot of times their lives are screwed up. And nothing ever works right. Nothing ever happens right. This happens, that happens. It's a constant up, down, up, down. God don't want us to go up, down. He wants us to be steady on that path following Him. Amen. Now, I say that without condemnation. I say that in love. Because it's important that you have your one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Father. That's the most important thing. Yes, yes. But then you've got to have a body you belong to. Yeah. Right. That's huge. Yes. Well, what about the people that are on some remote island out in the middle of nowhere? There's still a body of people there. Yep. That God can use. Now, I don't say this. This is just the truth. We, it's biblical. We need to be with our own company. Yes. I've heard a lot of people say, well, the body of Christ is your own company. Yes, we are in the body of Christ, but there is a certain ministry. There is a certain flock. There is a certain group of people that God wants to put you with because it will save yes. your life. That's right. Amen. Yes. It's the truth. Yes, it is. It is the absolute truth. If God tells you this afternoon to move to Peru, then you better get ready and you better leave as soon as you can. Because that's where He's calling you. You need to do it. And I would hug you, and even though I love you and I'll miss you, but I'll say, get the heck out of here and follow what God's telling you to do. Don't miss it. It's true. Come on, guys, believe this. This is the real deal here, man. This is important. Yes. I know one person that chose. They were getting a dollar more raise from their work, but they were going to have to miss Sunday if they took this dollar raise. And I remember Dad telling that person, a dollar is not that important to me compared to God and keeping my family in church and doing what you what I know to what you know to do. He ended up taking that raise. Pretty much never saw him again after that. Didn't see his family. His family scattered. They got divorced. He died in his fifties of disease. Just all kinds of problems. Dad, I'm not over the line sharing this, am I? This isn't rough or mean or do I sound like a jerk or no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm actually being pretty polite about this kind of stuff. Because I take this serious. I, I, this is how I live. Yes, amen. That's right. I love being here. I love this church. I love pastors. What God's called me to do. But if He tells me tomorrow to move, I'm moving. Yep. Yep. I don't. I don't really want to. Mm -hmm. But if He does, I, I, I'm going to. Yeah. Right. Because I want to fulfill the plan. That's right. Yes. Amen. I want Him to look at me and say, "Well done, thou good and faithful servant." Yes. Amen. Me too. Now I'm going to tell you right now. Some of you right now are coming into your promise. Are coming into your promised land. Are coming back to God and doing what He's called you to do. You've made that decision. I see hearts in here that have made a decision. And said, God, come hell or high water, I'm doing what you called me to do. I don't care where it takes me, who i got to be around, where i got to go. It doesn't matter. I just want to follow you, God. Amen. And some of you are going to find yourself doing stuff that you thought you would never, ever do for the kingdom. But He's getting ready to open the door. Thus said the Lord in the name of Jesus. He's getting ready to open the door for your life. And you're going to look out and step out. It's going to be a new horizon. Yes. There's going to be new life. There's yes. going to be victory. And you're going to be thrusted forth in the glory and the anointing of the living God. Yeah. yeah. So expect it. Yeah. Amen. This is going to 
going to sound funny, but it's going to—it could be around the next corner. Yeah. Come on. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Be ready for it. Yes. Be all in. Amen. Be all in. Amen. Be all into it. Amen. Amen. I love you guys so much. You're my pride and joy. I love you. You make me happy. The church was praying. The angel came and said, let's go. And then it talks about they get to the house. They didn't realize who he was. They heard his voice. They remembered who he was. He told them, tell, tell uh, John, I believe it was, tell him that I'm alive. I'm here, and he ended up, Peter ended up moving on and going to another place. And then let's get down here to uh, verse 20. I love these verses. Now Herod had been very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, but they came to him with one accord. And having made uh, Blastus the king's personal aid, their friend, they asked for peace because their country was supplied with food by the king's country. So on a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat on his throne and gave an oration to them. And the people kept shouting, the voice of God and not of man. Amen. <laughs> How many people? I'm not even going to get into that. Verse 23, then immediately an angel of the Lord struck Herod because he did not give glory to God and he was eaten by worms and died. Whoa! Yeah. Wow. But the word of God grew and multiplied Amen. and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. <laughs> and they also took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Folks, God will remove anything or anyone that's trying to block you from following His will. Amen. God's a loving God. He loves people. But you turn your face to Him, you blaspheme Him, and you say no to Him, and you... I'm not talking about people that are born again now, okay? I mean, you, you, if you're born again and you do that, you're going to have problems, I promise you. Yeah. But any demon that tries to hinder you from fulfilling the call that God has on your life, Amen. if you'll continue to do what God's called you to do and be serious about it, He will remove whatever He has to remove out of your life or in your way to see to it that your ministry that God's called you to do multiplies and that you have harvest and that you multiply with your family, your friends, whatever it is in your life that you need, God will bless you. That's right. Yes. He'll see to it Come on, that Jesus. the enemy's removed. Come on. Yeah. The devil's already defeated. But if a king Aaron tries to rise up in your life, life and keep you from fulfilling the plan of God, there's no, worried, there's no reason to be worried or nervous or sick Amen. about that. Amen. It's very easy for God to send an angel yeah. and for the angel just to go. Yeah. Worm time. <laughs> Worm feed. I mean, seriously, you know what I mean? I know that sounds brutal, but... <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want to get ate by worms. I don't know about you. Yeah. That's a good title. Don't get ate by worms. I don't want to get ate by none. That old trap calls What the heck is this weird talking about? Heresy! <laughs> but see, King Herod was a man that pledged allegiance to Satan. Yeah. Pride. Yeah. Full of pride. Beyond full of pride, probably. And it took drastic measures. You can read on. That scared the hell out of a lot of people seeing someone get ate by worms. 
People started, okay, here, I guess we better serve the Lord. That'll put a fear in you. A reverential fear of the Lord, though. He's not here to beat on us. He's here to love on us. But we need to do what he says. That's important. I knew if I didn't do what my dad say, he was going to whip me growing up as a kid. And there's probably times he still wants to do that, probably. <laughs> I'm 43. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my dad spanked me. But I was more afraid of my mom. <laughs> my, dad. my dad would let up. My mom would just... <laughs> <laughs> they knew dad meant business, but mom was just going to go ninja on you, you know what I mean? <laughs> she didn't even need a spoon or nothing. She just used her hand, and it was like, geez, Louise. But I'll tell you, God will see to it. That no matter what the enemy tries to do in your life, he's going to make sure that he will remove that. Yeah. If you follow the Lord. What was Peter all about? Peter was just all about giving the Holy Ghost, releasing the Holy Spirit. He was there on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. He got filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Tongues of fire on their head. The wind of the Holy Ghost. He goes out and preaches. 3,000 people get saved on that day. People are drunk. People are joyful. Things are happening. The move of God is going on. And from that day forward, Peter just went out and made sure that he preached the gospel. Preached Jesus. Preached the gospel. Preached Jesus. Did whatever he could do. Went from town to town. Wherever God led him. He touched people. Prayed for people. He just stayed open to the Lord. And of course the devil threw monkey wrenches in his pathway, just like he does yours every day. Tries to get you into fear, tries to get you into bitterness, tries to get you into unforgiveness, tries to get you to focus on the natural, the problems and the issues, and all the junk instead of looking to the Lord. And he'll try to do that. He tried to imprint, he imprisoned Peter, but Peter got supernaturally broke out of prison. If God will break Peter out of prison, he'll break you out of prison. If you need 300 bucks to get a new washing machine and get God to get you out of that prison and give you $300 to get you a washing machine. Amen. Yeah. Amen. What's the difference? Amen. He cares if your clothes are clean. Why doesn't he? Of course he does. He cares about what you care about. And if he doesn't want you to do something, he'll make a plan. Don't do it. Right. And if he does want you to do it, he'll make a plan. Do it. Yes. He's not, well, I'm just going to sit up here and just wait for him. <laughs> Let him be nervous. Let him. Uh, no. <laughs> he wants to provide to you what you need and what you're asking. Amen. Right. But sometimes because you want something don't mean that He wants to give it to you. Right. It might not be for you just because you want it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See? A lot of people, that, that's where a lot of people give up. God hasn't answered you. Maybe He doesn't want to answer you yet. Right. That doesn't mean you stop following Him. That's right. Right. It's not time for the answer. God's perfect. His timing is perfect. Yes. He knows when to say something to you, when not to say something to you. He knows when to jerk you up and when not to jerk you up. He knows when to, he, he knows when to do what He needs to do in your life. There's a situation right now. I'm asking Him, do you want me to do this, God? Yes or no? There's an open door here. I can see some awesome opportunities here. To bless people, to love people, to help people. I can, I, can, I can maybe even make some extra cash here in my life, you know. And I can see some of this stuff. But Lord, do you want me? It looks good, it looks fun, but do you want me to do it or do you not want me to do it? Amen. That's where I'm at right now. Amen. There's a door that opened for me that I never thought would open again. And I'm asking if he wants me to do it. And he's going to tell me. We don't have to be nervous with God, guys. He's got you in his heart. 
He loves you. He has a plan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. A lot of folks give up on God because they just won't believe. They won't believe. Got to have faith to serve God. God rewards those who diligently seek. Yes. What does that mean? That means somebody that just follows him. Puts him first. I blew it today, God. I know it. Forgive me. Lord, I love you. Let's go. I just want to be like you, Jesus. I want to follow you. I want you to use me, Lord. I know I'm a knucklehead sometimes, and things are weird, and things happen, and I react out of my flesh, or I react out of emotions, or I let this, da, 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 da. Lord, I love you, though. Father, forgive me. I love you. Let's just go, Lord. I love you. That's who you can work with. Amen. That's right. Amen. Just be honest with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Be honest with the Lord. Hmm. Did you know that when you pray, angels are released? Yes. yes. Angels are released. That out. We just read it. Yes. The church prayed. Who stirred up Peter? Who freed him? An angel of the living God. <clears throat> some of you see angels. Some of us don't. I personally, that I know of, have never seen an angel that I know of. <clears throat> but they're released when you pray the will of God. Amen. When you pray for a brother, when you pray for a sister, there's angelic help that's released from heaven. Ministering spirits to come minister to that friend, that loved one, that person that you're praying for. Yeah. That guy you meet on the street, that woman you meet on the street, there's angels that are released because you have the power in you to release and the authority to release them, the word of the Lord, the presence of God. Amen. Who lives in the presence of God? Angels. Yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're a supernatural being, but we can live in the presence of God as well. And one of these days, we're going to live there for eternity. Oh, glory. <laughs> How many of you heard about Brother Joe Jordan? He passed on and went home to be with the Lord here last week. You want to hear about that? Brother Joe. Brother Joe. Remember Brother Joe? Yes. <laughs> Give him some more, Lord. You should try playing golf with that guy when you're beating him. You get up on the tee box, he goes, Give him a round, Lord. You're like... <laughs> I'm trying to hit the golf ball and hammer it out there by the glory. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> He's rejoicing. Amen. I'm asking God for a double portion of His anointing in this church. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Get drunk on this. Good being drunk on the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's the yes, best. Yeah. Feel so free and just. Oh, Lord, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Anybody in here? Uh, does this does this make sense to anybody? I heard broken elbow. No. Broken elbow. Does that make sense to anybody? Broken elbow. Yeah. Makes sense to you? All right, we'll come up here then. Is anybody else? Christy? Uh, my little cousin broke his elbow. Right at a yesterday. Yesterday broke his elbow. Hey, come on up here then. Let's pray for him. It's your nephew? My cousin. Oh, your cousin? What does that mean to you? So you're back. It gives you problems now. What can you not do with it? You can't straighten it all the way. Take your jacket off. <clears throat> what's, what's his name? Carl, I'll pray for you. All right. Let's just lift up Ricardo right now. He broke his elbow in a wrestling match yesterday. He has to have surgery tomorrow. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand right now for Ricardo. Lord, you gave me this word of knowledge because you want to do something about it. That's why he did it. So I'm asking you right now for your healing power right now to touch Ricardo in Jesus' name. I command his elbow to be healed. In Jesus' name, I command his bones to pop back into place. And be restored right now. Ask him, Lord, for a miracle. Give him a miracle. In Jesus' name. 
angels, go forth and minister healing right now to Ricardo right now. Let him feel the fire of God, the heat of God flow through his arm. Release that anointing in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, I'm going to shout you back. Yes, I feel that anointing crystal right there just kind of shot out. <laughs> That's good. Are you going to see him today, maybe? Or you don't know? Well, if you can, get a hold of his mom or dad or whatever today and just let them know that what happened. The word of knowledge. Just tell them that we pray for him and expect God. Even if he does have to go through a surgery or whatever, then it'll be quick. He'll recover quickly, but tell them to expect God's going to heal his elbow, and his elbow's going to, yeah, that's right. Just tell him it's going to be okay. His elbow's going to be fine. Don't have to worry about future things, problems. He's going to be fine because Jesus is touching him right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let his arm be totally healed, Father. I'm asking for that, for Ricardo. So they don't have to pay bills and surgery and all that stuff. Have compassion, Lord. I'm asking Touch in Jesus' name. Amen. So please let them know that, okay? You can't straighten your arm out all the way. Straighten as far as you can. Okay, so also oh, your elbows. Oh, yeah. I can feel that. I never knew that. That's as far as you can straighten your arm. Stretch your hands out, guys. Right now, let's ask God for a miracle for clarity right now. Command this elbow to be healed. You straighten up, you go back into alignment now in Jesus' name. I command healing right now. In Jesus' name. I command there. That thing's moving. You feel that? It's straightening out. Right now. I guys, it's straightening out right now. Yeah. Glory. Whoa. Whoa, that thing moved by right, two inches, inch and a half. In Jesus' name, I command the bones to be totally restored right now. And to be like this the rest of his life. In Jesus' name. Bones be healed.
you haven't been able to move it out like that in a long time. So you're saying to me in front of all these people several years ago you did this. You're saying to me in front of all these people that you're able to get more mobile. It hasn't been that straight in a long time. Praise God. Glory. I felt it. I felt it. You had that thing move. I mean, your arm literally moved. Glory. Amen. Amen. Just expect it to be all the way open. Yes. 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 Well, it has the sick to recover. So you're recovering. It's Amen. opening up. It's yes. Amen. Amen. The healing and oil, it's the healing oil. The anointing oil that's loosening. Dislocated his elbow, look. And it, it's, it didn't grow back in straight. It's like curved on the inside. It bothers you sometimes? God, this is so good. He knows what he's doing, doesn't he? All right. You believe God will heal you and restore us, right? Father, in Jesus' name, right? Yeah, Stick glory. your hands out towards Mike. Yeah. Whoa! Oh. Glory. The anointing, healing anointing. Yes, thank you, Lord. Release. Release. <laughs> I command the healing anointing to flow strong. I command his elbow to be healed in the name of Jesus. And I command this thing to straighten up, to be in line the way you created it, God. I command no more pain, no more bothersome in Jesus' name. But from this moment forward, he will have total, 100% healing in his elbow in the name of Jesus. Yay. Thank you, Father. Yay. In Jesus' name. Father, I ask you for that anointing to flow through his hands and to others' lives as well. That healing anointing, that virtue. Yeah. Yeah. Glory. <laughs> oh! yeah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Man. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, he is. He's doing more to him, more to Mike than that elbow. That's right. Rest yeah. restored. Yay. You know what? He's actually imparting. Yeah. There's an impartation being done in your life right now, Mike. Thank you, Lord. For the glory of the living God. And I don't know fully what it is. I ain't going to make words up. But he'll show you what that is. Yeah, go for it. Jesus. This is for you, Mike. The Lord says, You have hungered, hungered after me, and I've come and touched you, says the Lord, and you've experienced being free. Yeah. But now I'm going to take you to a new level than you've ever understood before. I'm going to take you into a freedom that is much more. Yeah. You're not just going to taste freedom and go in and go out, but you're going to stand in a freedom that's going to cause you to rejoice and shout. You're going to be so blessed and refreshed, it's going to be beyond what you've ever known. But listen, says the Lord. It's my goodness that I have shown. Yeah. And you're going to take that goodness and you're going to go to others and you're going to say to them, you can be free too if you'll just learn to enter in. Whoa, come on. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for my Lord and his family. Use them for your glory. Yes, Lord, yeah. Use them for your glory. In the name of Jesus. Now, how does it feel? Is there any difference at all? If not, just let's find it. Just tell me what the glory of God. Thank you. Thank you. You were having pain earlier in it? Did it happen? It flares up. Flares up. You would know by looking. I don't want to look. It doesn't look. Does it feel any different? Is it? It's different. Father, in Jesus' name. That's taken care of. That's taken care of. Yes, that's taken care of. God brought you up with that. He touched that. He took care of that. He healed that, but He gave you more. Yeah. That's what the Lord will do for with words of knowledge. He'll, he'll, he'll add on to it usually for people's lives. Amen. It's 
shirt? Amen. Yeah. I like the shirt. <laughs> Make a trade. Well, glory! Glory to God! Oh, you? Yeah. God says everything that has been spoken to uh, here, that He says, if you do as I have spoken through my servant, you will make make elbow room for your family because you are about to take a whole nations as you do what this, uh, Pastor Mike has just spoken to you. Make elbow room again. Make elbow room for your new family. God is good. Let's stand up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah, thank you. If you do not know Jesus, you've never asked Jesus to come into your life or come into your heart. I'm not going to call you up here anything like that. You just know it. You've never fully given your life to Jesus Christ and said, Jesus, come live in me. I give you my life. If you've never done that, I'm going to pray a prayer right now. Jesus loves you. He has plans for you. The Bible says that He gave His life that we could have life. He rose from the dead on that third day. And that's the day that He brought us victory and healing and forgiveness by His blood. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if you'll confess your sin, if you'll repent of your sin, and you'll believe in your heart, and you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and is Lord and has risen from the dead and He is the Son of God, that He'll save you and give you life. Life for eternity in heaven, not hell. So whoever you are, I'm going to pray this prayer. I just want everybody in here to repeat this prayer after me, but I want you to mean it with your heart. It's between you and the Lord. The devil's a liar. That's right. There's nothing but death, destruction, and misery. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But God comes to give life and life more abundant. So if that's you, I want you to stand here today. And as we all pray and repeat this prayer, meet it with your heart. Jesus is going to touch you. And you'll never be the same. You'll have the love of God living on the inside of you. It'll change your life forever. Everybody repeat after me. Just say, Heavenly Father, I come before you today. My heart is open. My heart is open. I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. I give my life to you. God, I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ died and rose for me to give me life. So, Father, I give you my life. Jesus, Come live in my heart. Be my Savior. Be my freedom giver. I give my life to you. Jesus, I will follow you all the rest of my life. I thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you. I thank you for saving me. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now let me just pray. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, to these people or person, whoever it is, that pray this prayer. Satan, you've been served notice. Amen. You no longer control Amen. their life any longer. They've given their life to Jesus Christ. And I thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers their lives and their hearts right now. In the name of Jesus. Yes. And Father, I thank you for using them for your glory and your goodness on this earth, Lord. 
Father, just make heaven real to them. In the days ahead, thank you that you surround them with people that will be able to minister, help them, bring them into what God's yes. called yes. that person or these people to do in the name of Jesus.